the middle of the market, there's always been a gap for Boeing. The company itself has debated on how best to fill a market, a market between its long-range 787 and efficient 737 MAX. Initially, it was thought they were working on two aircraft sharing the same technologies, or otherwise nicknamed the NLT and NSA project. Find out more by clicking the top right -hand corner now. Later on, Boeing started further studies of a new smaller white-body aircraft dubbed by many to be the 797. With a huge development cost of above 10 billion and with huge costs the company was already facing, the new Boeing CEO has put the NMA on hold. The easy option for Boeing is simply to reinstate the 757 and 767 with new more fuel efficient technologies. Boeing has previously announced no intentions to restart 757 or 767 production lines. However, new reports show Boeing is once again discussing and studying re-engineering the 757 with potential customers. The larger 767X has also been discussed, and I've already done one on that aircraft, so why not click the pop-up banner now if you are interested. What then would the newly emerged 757 Plus look like? Would Boeing reverse course with the overhead? And what are some issues that still remain? Well, before we take a look, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Also, do check out the new Airplane Productions Instagram page, home to quick aviation content and the latest developments in the industry. Right, back to this one, the 757 Plus. concept has been floated around for years, though the name 757 Plus was only recently emerged with reports stating the project had already received this name internally within Boeing. 757 Plus would be a newer, more fuel efficient version of the workhorse, operated on many medium range routes that have medium capacity. It will however have longer range and higher capacity than the current 757s, with range of 5,000 nautical miles while seating 250 passengers, fitting perfectly into what Boeing terms as the middle of the market. The main competition of the 757 Plus would be the already launched and newer Airbus A321 XLR. With capacity for 206 while flying 4,700 nautical miles, the XLR was Airbus's answer to replace 757s while burning 30% less fuel. The new Plus version would thus have to reduce its fuel burn by 30%. So how then would Boeing reduce fuel burn? Today, 757s are powered by Rolls-Royce RB211 or PW2000 engines, the most powerful producing 43,000 pounds of thrust. Boeing could install new, more fuel-efficient engines. But which engine could they use? From Pratt, their most powerful new GTF engine produces 35,000 pounds of thrust. From CFM, the Leap has a maximum thrust output of 32,000. And from Rolls-Royce, well, they do not offer engines in the single out category anymore. Realistically, a new engine will have to be developed specifically for the 757 Plus and other heavier middle-of-the-market aircraft applications, a new engine that sits in the 50,000 pound thrust category. So what's on the cards? Pratt is developing a scaled-up version of its geared turbofan engine with a higher bypass ratio to produce around 45,000 pounds of thrust. But the technology isn't quite there yet, as such an engine would have higher pressure ratios. CFM's big engine division, General Electric, may well scale down its GE9X, though such an engine would be too heavy. Rolls is reportedly working on its ultra-fan engine to kick off with around 50,000 pounds of thrust, 
these new engines will most likely be available in the mid-2020s, and the launch of the 757 Plus could well speed up developments of new engines. New engines will give 757 a 15% fuel burn reduction, but to achieve the remaining 15%, more will have to be done. 757 Plus could well feature new wing technologies, taking the new 777X wing technology with composites, which will give it a 7-10% to fuel burn reduction. The aircraft will retain its current fuselage and aluminium material, as carbon composites or wider fuselage will be too expensive. That said, the fuselage may be lengthened slightly, with a new length between the Dash 200 and Dash 300 to add around 12 more seats. Or perhaps, Boeing will optimize the existing fuselage space. Here's a look at the current 75 seat map of Delta. We can clearly see a huge amount of space taken up by the front galley and middle toilets. Deletion of door 2 will create additional usable length. Current galleys toilets positioned at door 2 can be removed with sufficient galley space left as well as one lavatory at the front and two more at the rear on the new 757 Plus. This adds a total of 12 seats and will reduce fuel burn around 5%. It's not all about adding more seats though, as the new 757 Plus will feature a brand new sky interior. Amenities will include new curved overhead bins and mood lighting to increase the sense of spaciousness. Similar to the 777X, Boeing could carve out the cabin side walls increasing cabin width addressing one of the 757's old problems, its narrow seats. Meanwhile, new installation panels and the new engines would make for a quieter cabin, while the windows can be enlarged just like the 777X. Similar to the 777X, the cockpit will feature new displays while maintaining commonality for pilots. In fact, much of the lessons learned from the 777X development would apply to the 757 Plus project. So putting it all together, more seats, more range and lower fuel burn that matches the XLR, sounds then like one great deal. In fact, Boeing has actually previously studied this, though they felt there was little business case for the cost of restarting 757 production lines. One issue is the high price. This is due to the unique positioning of the aircraft, meaning its manufacturing cost is virtually the same as a white body. Is there demand though for the 757 Plus? While well, many US carriers such as American and United have already gone for the Airbus product, leaving only Delta to make their move. The 757 replacement market has shrunk since then, and really, while the middle of the market may span anywhere from 1,000 aircraft that Airbus is predicting to 4,000 that Boeing claims, the lower end is realistically a market for 1,000 aircraft as I see it. The upper end is where the real demand is, with no real tailor-made new fuel-efficient aircraft serving that part of the market yet. Well, till Boeing potentially launches a re-engined 767 or new white body that is the case. One issue of the 757 Plus is that it makes sense only for airlines that operate 757s today with similar parts and crew commonality. For others, the huge operator base of the A320neo family means the XLR will have lower crew costs and maintenance costs. The big downside though is that the 757 is old. First flying in the 80s, the aircraft has outdated systems. A321 XLR has flyby wire, 757 does not. A321 XLR can take containerized cargo, 757 cannot. You get the idea. Age is the issue of the 757 Plus, and development costs of 1 to 2 billion to modernize such an old aircraft may seem obsolete. For most, the XLR flies just as far with a more modern cabin, 
plus it will be cheaper to purchase thanks to similar production processes as the rest of the A320 family. Having said that though, the 757 Plus or 757 Re engine will be an interesting aircraft to see flying the skies. But perhaps it is time to put the 757 down on its long legs for good. Let the XLR serve this lower end middle of the market and focus on what airlines really need a new 767 replacement for shorter routes.